Good afternoon. This is uh, today is the second day of our retreat, healing, interbeing, happiness, and uh, we are going to uh, practice uh, what we call the mindfulness of uh, compassion. Mindfulness is a kind of energy that you can generate by the practice of. Uh, Breathing, walking, or just uh, listening. Mindfulness is the kind of energy that helps us to recognize what is there. And mindfulness will produce uh, the second kind of energy called concentration. And if uh, mindfulness and concentration are powerful enough, uh, they will lead to the third kind of energy called insight, prasna. Mindfulness Concentration and insight are the heart of Buddhist practice. The aim of uh, Buddhist practice of meditation is uh, to heal and to transform ourselves. And the energies that help us heal and transform, they are mindfulness, concentration, and insight. Mindfulness is always mindfulness of something. When you breathe, uh, and if you know that you are breathing, and that is mindfulness of breathing. When you smile, and if you know that you are smiling, that is mindfulness of smiling. When you drink your tea, and if you are aware that you are drinking your tea, that is mindfulness of drinking. And when you walk, if you are aware of every step you make, that is mindfulness of walking. If there is a happiness in yourself, and if you know that happiness is there, it's called mindfulness of happiness. And if there is pain and sorrow and suffering, and if you know that there is pain, suffering and sorrow, that is the mindfulness of suffering. When we suffer, and if we know how to generate the energy of suffering, of mindfulness, to recognize our suffering and to embrace it, uh, we can begin to heal. So mindfulness of uh, suffering lead to mindfulness of compassion, because understanding suffering always brings about the energy of compassion. Suppose you look at uh, another person, and you see that there is a lot of suffering in him or in her. That is mindfulness of suffering. When you are mindful of the suffering in him or in her, you are not angry at him or at her anymore. Instead, you want to do something, uh, to say something to help him or her suffer less. So it's very clear that mindfulness of suffering always generates the energy of compassion. And when uh, the energy of compassion is there, you don't suffer much. Instead, uh, you begin to, to, to transform, to feel lighter and with more uh, freedom. In order to understand the suffering in the other person, uh, you must understand your own suffering. So when you understand your own suffering, uh, you will have uh, compassion uh, for yourself. Compassion helps you to suffer less, to be more free, uh, lighter. And when you are freer, when you suffer less, you can help the other person to suffer less also. So the practice of uh, Buddhist meditation begins uh, with yourself. You have to help yourself before you can help him or her. There is a suffering inside of every one of us. And uh, most of us do not want to go home to ourselves in order to listen to the suffering inside. We try to run away from ourselves. We don't want to be in touch with the suffering inside because we believe that we will suffer if we get in touch with the suffering inside of us. So the way we do is uh, to try to uh, run away from, our, uh, from ourselves, from our suffering, or uh, to try to cover up the suffering inside of us. There are people who try to forget their suffering, to run away by, uh, from the suffering by the way of eating. When they feel lonely, when they feel anxious, they try to go and look for something to eat. 
because they think that eating like that will help them forget their suffering for, for a while. Other people, they turn on the television, uh, watching television may help them to forget uh, the suffering inside of them. Even the TV, television program is not very interesting. They do not have the courage to turn off the TV because they know that if they turn off the TV, they have to go back to their suffering. And then there are many of them try to forget the suffering by just drinking alcohol. And the Buddha advised us not to do so. We should try to go home and to take care of the suffering inside. The Buddha said that if we know how to generate the energy of mindfulness, and then we will, we will not risk to be overwhelmed by the suffering uh, every time we go home to ourselves. The energy of uh, mindfulness helps protect you so that you will not be overwhelmed by the energy of suffering in you. If you know how to practice mindful breathing, mindful walking, and then you can generate uh, that energy of mindfulness. And if you go home to yourself with that energy, you are stronger. You are not afraid of the suffering inside. Suffering inside of us is a kind of uh, energy. And uh, the practitioner knows how to produce another energy in order to recognize and take care of the suffering. That energy is called mindfulness. Mindfulness, the energy of mindfulness, taking care of the energy of suffering is like a mother holding a baby in order to help the baby to suffer less. The mother does not try to fight the baby, to suppress the baby. The, mo the mother recognizes the baby as a suffering and try to hold the baby very tenderly in her two arms. If the mother holds the baby uh, tenderly for a few minutes, the baby will suffer less. So if we know how to hold our pain, our sorrow, our suffering, we will suffer less after a few minutes of practice. And if we, we know how to hold our suffering longer, you will come to understand the nature, the roots of that suffering. And when we come to understand the nature, the root of our suffering, uh, the energy of understanding will bring about the energy of compassion. The mother, after a few minutes of holding the baby, find out what is wrong with the baby. When she find out what is wrong with the baby, is she can transform the situation very quickly. When we understand our suffering, it's very easy for us to transform our suffering. So suffering is the first noble truth taught by the Buddha. And understanding the nature of suffering is the second noble truth. If you look into the first noble truth deeply, and then you will see the second noble truth, Samudaya. So there is a practice uh, of chanting it can help us uh, go home to ourselves in order to recognize and hold our suffering during the time of chanting. In Mahayana Buddhism, there is a Bodhisattva with the name uh, uh, Avalokiteshvara Kuan Yin, who knows how to listen to suffering. Avalokita can listen to his own suffering, her own suffering, and therefore she can listen to the suffering of other people. That practice is called uh, compassionate listening. Compassionate listening is a listen in such a way that allows compassion to be born into your heart. You practice like uh, Bodhisattva Avalokita. You listen to your own suffering and you listen to the suffering of the other person so that compassion can be born in your heart. And when compassion is born in your heart, you suffer less right away. It can be very quick. If you sit there and listen to the suffering of the other person, compassion may arise after a few minutes of listening. And that uh, energy of compassion begins to heal you and help heal the other person. Uh, we used to uh, 
recite the name of Avalokiteshvara, but uh, you do not try to do like him, like her. Try to listen to our own suffering and the suffering of the other person. When we go home and get in touch with the suffering inside, we will find out that the suffering inside of us carries within itself the suffering of our father, our mother. Our father or mother may have had a lot of suffering, and because they did not know how to transform that suffering, they have transmitted that suffering to us. And that is why from time to time we suffer, and we do not understand why we suffer like that. And uh, if we hold, we embrace our suffering, if we listen to our suffering long enough, you realize that our suffering also carries within itself the suffering of our ancestors, our nation, our people. And if we listen to our own suffering, we see that our suffering reflects also the suffering of our society, violence, fear, anger, despair. So when we begin to listen to the suffering inside of us, we have a chance to understand our own suffering, the suffering of the other person, the other people in our family, and also other people in society. And we can also see that uh, Mother Earth has also begun to suffer, and uh, we may like to do something in order to help Mother Earth to suffer less. So the monastics here, they have trained in order to chant in such a way that can uh, generate the energy of mindfulness, understanding, and compassion. When they chant the name of Kuan Yin for the first time, they try to go back to themselves and get in touch with the suffering inside of them. And the purpose of listening to the suffering inside is to allow the energy of understanding and compassion to be born. And when they chant the name for the second time, they try to see the suffering of the people in front of them, around them. And if they can get in touch with the suffering in the people around them, they allow more compassion to be born in the heart. And when they chant the name for the third time, they try to reach out to society in order to understand the suffering a little bit everywhere in the world, violence, war, fear, despair, and so on. Mindful chanting can generate a powerful collective energy of mindfulness and compassion that has the power to heal, to be embraced by that collective energy if we know how to allow that collective energy to penetrate into our body, to, be, to penetrate into our heart, and then we will get also the healing that we need. The energy, the collective energy generated by the sending to penetrate into our body, we'll be able to release the tension in our body, and we will feel better after a few minutes of listening. And if we have uh, some pain or sorrow or anger or despair in our heart, it is the time to open our heart and allow the energy of the Sangha to penetrate and help hold the suffering inside of our heart the way the baby allowed her mother embracing her. We practice like this. We allowed ourselves to be like a drop of water in the river. We allow the river to embrace us, to transport us, and we become the river. We are no longer a separate drop of water. We allow the collective energy of the Sangha to embrace us. We say silently, Dear Sangha, this is my pain, this is my sorrow, this is my fear, this is my anger. Please help 
embrace it for me. And if we know how to surrender ourselves to the Sangha and allow the Sangha to, to hold you, to embrace you with its uh, collective energy of mindfulness and compassion, we will get the healing and we will suffer less, much less, after a few minutes of listening. In order to succeed in this practice, we should allow ourselves to be fully present in the here and the now. We should uh, follow our in-breath and out-breath and allow our body to relax. If we know how to follow our in-breath and out-breath and surrender ourselves to the Sangha, and then we can stop the thinking. Stopping the thinking is very important because the thinking will take us away from this place. The purpose of uh, Buddhist practice, of the Buddhist practice, is uh, to suffer less and to have more joy and happiness. And if we learn the correct practice, this can begin uh, to have effect right uh, during the first uh, few hours of practice. In the, in the Sutra on Mindful Breathing, Anapanasati Sutta, the Buddha gave us a very concrete exercise in order to do so. The first uh, and the second exercise of Mindful Breathing is to bring our mind home to our body. In our daily life, uh, very often our body is there, but our mind is elsewhere. Our mind may be caught in the past or in the future or in our projects. Uh, that is uh, the state of uh, distraction. Distraction is the opposite of mindfulness and concentration. This uh, is uh, distraction, the, lo the loss of mindfulness. The body is one place and the mind is another place. So when you breathe in and you pay attention to your in-breath, you bring your mind home to your body and you need only two or three seconds. And and in three seconds, it can bring the body to the mind. And when the body and, and the mind are together, we are established in the here and the now. When your body and your mind are together, you, you are fully present, fully alive. And this is the first fruit of the practice. And you, you can get it just with three seconds of practice. While breathing in, if you know how to pay attention to your in-breath, you bring your mind home to your body and you, you become truly present in the here and the now. And that is the first exercise recommended by the Buddha. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. So the first uh, exercise is uh, to be aware of uh, the in-breath, uh, the in-breath and the out-breath. And the second, the second exercise is equally easy. When you breathe in, you follow your in-breath from, from the beginning to the end. Breathing in, I follow my in-breath from the beginning to the end. Breathing in, I follow my in-breath all the way through. And if you practice like that, not only you have mindfulness, but you have also concentration. So to generate the energy of mindfulness and concentration is not a difficult thing. Uh, in a few seconds, in half a minute, you can already generate quite a bit of uh, mindfulness and concentration. And when mindfulness and concentration are powerful enough, you begin to get insight.
and a Buddhist practitioner knows how to generate these three kinds of energy, namely mindfulness, concentration, and insight. Because these three kinds of energies have the power to heal, to transform. We know that in the Noble Eightfold Path, we have uh, right mindfulness, right concentration, right view, right insight. So my uh, insight is the other name for right view. If you have uh, mindfulness and if you have uh, concentration, these two things will lead to, to, to right view or insight. Suppose you breathe in and you are concentrated on your in-breath. You discover that you are alive. This is very logical because uh, when you breathe in, you become aware that you are still alive. So breathing, breathing in mindfully and with concentration, bring the insight that I am alive right away. And it is a wonderful to be alive, to be still alive. And to be alive is a miracle, the greatest of all miracles. So when you breathe in mindfully, you, you get the insight of being alive. And when you breathe out, you can already begin to celebrate the fact that you are still alive. So insight or right view is not something you get after only after 8 years or 20 years of practice. You can get it just after 5 seconds of practice. When you breathe in mindfully, you may get many other insights. Suppose you breathe in mindfully and you become aware of uh, your eyes. Breathing in, I'm aware that I have eyes. When I pay attention to my eyes, I discover that my eyes are still in good condition. And for us who, have, uh, who still have eyes in good uh, conditions, the paradise of forms and colors is still available at any time. <coughs> we need only to open our eyes in order to enjoy that paradise of forms and colors. And uh, breathing in and pay attention to your eyes, you recognize one of the conditions of happiness that you already have. Suppose you breathe and become aware of your heart. Breathing in, I'm aware of my heart, mindfulness of heart. And you may get the insight that your heart is still good, is still uh, functioning normally. Breathing in, I know that I, I have a heart that uh, still functions normally. That is already an insight. So wherever there is mindfulness and concentration, there is insight. Uh, insight is enlightenment. Is, uh, enlightenment is uh, illumination. Yeah. Enlightenment is something you can get here and now if you have some mindfulness and concentration. You don't need to meditate on a kung an for three years in order to get enlightenment. Just breathe in and out mindfully and you can get a lot of insight, a lot of enlightenment. So the second exercise of mindful breathing is to follow your in-breath and out-breath all the way through so that you may increase the energy of concentration and that, uh, that uh, second exercise we can call it uh, to follow your in-breath, your out-breath. And just practicing these uh, two simple exercises can bring you a lot of happiness already. You bring your mind home to your body. You recognize that you are very lucky. You have many conditions of happiness that are available. And you can be happy right away. I don't need money. 
uh, fame, power in order to be happy, I need only mindfulness. And mindfulness helps me to see many other thousands of conditions of happiness that are already inside of me and around me. I know that I have enough conditions to happy here and now. I do not have to run into the future in order to get more conditions of happiness. And that is why we can say that mindfulness is a source of happiness. The third exercise recommended by the Buddha is breathing in, I'm aware of my body. This is a classical Chinese. It means aware of the formation called body. So while breathing in, you recognize the fact that you have a body. Many of us spend two hours, three hours with our computer, and we completely forget that we have a body. And when you are not with your body, you are not truly alive. In order to be truly alive, you have to bring your mind home to your body. And one mindful in-breath or a mindful step can bring you home to the here and the now and bring your mind home to your body very quick. And when we go home to our body, we might get the insight that there is a lot of uh, tension and stress in our body. That is a kind of insight. And that is why the Buddha proposed the fourth exercise of mindful breathing. Breathing in, I release the tension in my body. I let go of the tension in my body. And this uh, yak means uh, to be aware, awareness. And this uh, means uh, to calm down. This uh, character Sometimes it means uh, breath. So the first meaning of this is uh, breath. The second meaning of this is to calm down. So this is uh, a exercise that we should practice uh, every day and several times a day in order not to be a victim of stress, of tension. And uh, if you allow tension, stress to be accumulated a lot in our body, there will be a lot of disease uh, um, appearing on that, uh, uh, on that uh, foundation. Our body is wonderful. It has a power, a natural power to heal itself. If you allow our body to do so. But in our modern time, we don't know how to allow our body, we do not allow our body to heal itself. We work our body too hard. We, allow, we let our body always under tension. That is why our body has a hard time to heal itself, even if we drink a lot of medicine. If we know how to relax, if we know how to release the tension, and then uh, we might not need uh, medicine, and our body can begin to heal itself. And human beings in our time do not know how to rest anymore. And that is why practicing this uh, fourth exercise of the Buddha, you allow us to rest and to heal. So we we might like to combine the third and the fourth exercise into one exercise. Breathing in, I'm aware of my body with a lot of stress. Breathing out, I allow my body to release the tension. And we can do that in the position of uh, standing, uh, sitting, uh, lying down, or walking. If you know the techniques of uh, mindful walking, and then from the parking lot to your office, you walk in such a way that each step can help you to release the tension in your body. Not only we can release the tension with every step, but we can touch 
the wonders of life that surround us in order to get the healing and the nourishment like we did this morning together. In, uh, <clears throat> in my practice center in France, every, every day we have a session of mindful walking together. We walk in such a way that the pure land becomes real uh, while we walk. You have to uh, put your mind and body into every step so that every step can generate the energy of uh, mindfulness, concentration, and insight. And then throughout the day, whenever we need to go from one place to another place, no matter how short is the distance, we always apply the techniques of mindful walking. Monks, nuns, lay practitioners are instructed to walk like that because that is the only style of walking in Plum Village. And if you come to Plum Village and see someone not walking like that, you know that he or she does not belong to the Plum Village community. <laughs> And if you visit us for one week, you get the habit of walking like that, and you enjoy every step you make after one week of uh, training. And I can assure you that if you apply that uh, method of walking in your daily life, you will not become a victim of stress, and you will not burn out. And that is why the teaching of the Buddha, the practice given by the Buddha, is still very up to date until this day. The first four uh, exercises are to help us taking care of our body and uh, begin to heal our body. When you go to, to bed, you may like to try the practice of mindful breathing, stopping your thinking, relaxing your body, and you may go uh, more easily into sleep with that practice. And uh, you may like to enjoy this kind of practice while you do things like uh, making breakfast, uh, washing dishes. You may like to uh, prepare breakfast for your family in a relaxing way and enjoy your in-breath and out-breath, and smile to your in-breath and out-breath. You do not need to go to the temple in order to practice mindful breathing and mindful walking. If you know how to breathe and smile during breakfast making, and then you, you can be happy and joyful during that time. According to the Buddhist teaching and practice, it is possible for us to generate a feeling of joy, a feeling of happiness whenever we want. We have already talked about uh, uh, a few examples. Breathing in, I'm aware of my eyes. Breathing in, I am aware of my heart. Breathing in, I'm aware of my feet that are still strong enough to walk. And uh, when we get in touch uh, with uh, these conditions of happiness that are already available, joy and happiness are born right away. And that is why the fifth exercise of mindful breathing is to generate, to create a feeling of joy. With the energy of mindfulness, you can create a feeling of joy. You can create a feeling of happiness for you and for the other person too. And if you can remind her, remind him, that he is very lucky, he has uh, such and such condition of happiness, you make him happy right here and right now. And that is why the practice recommended by the Buddha not only help you to take care of your body, but help you to create moments of joy, moments of happiness in your daily life for your uh, nourishment and healing. Every breath, every step, every act can be healing, nourishing, and you do not have to suffer with the practice of 
Buddhist meditation. We need the energy of joy, the energy of happiness to be strong enough in order to handle our suffering. It is like in a hospital, if a patient is too weak, the doctor will not allow him or her to go for surgery. They do something in order to help uh, the patient to be stronger, in order for the patient to, to be able to undergo the surgery. So every Buddhist practitioner should be able to generate the feeling, a feeling of joy or, or happiness, whatever, whenever she wants. A good practitioner has the power to generate joy and happiness for him and for the other person. And the next two exercises help us to take care, to handle the suffering in us. When a painful feeling arises, when a painful emotion arises, a good practitioner should know how to handle that painful feeling, that painful emotion. So the seventh exercise is to be aware of the pain. And uh, the eighth exercise is to calm down the pain. The seventh exercise is to be aware of the pain, of the suffering. And the eighth is to calm it down. Before the chanting, I have already said that uh, the pain, the pain is a kind of energy, and mindfulness is not the kind of energy. If you allowed the energy of suffering to be alone, you will suffer. A good practitioner always try to generate another kind of energy, the energy of mindfulness. First, to recognize the pain, and second is to embrace it tenderly so that uh, we can, we can, we can calm it down. So the seventh exercise is breathing in. I'm aware of the painful feeling or painful emotion in me. And the eighth is uh, breathing in, breathing out. I calm down the feeling of uh, pain, the painful uh, emotion in me. The image of a loving mother holding the baby tenderly can be very helpful. The energy of mindfulness represents the loving mother, and the energy of pain represents the baby suffering. Sometimes the pain is to, the energy of the pain is too big, and uh, the energy of mindfulness is not powerful enough because we are just uh, beginners in the practice. But if we continue to practice mindful breathing and more full walking on the fifth day, it might become uh, much stronger. And when mindfulness is strong enough, it can do these two kinds of work, recognizing and holding, embracing. In the case your mindfulness is not strong enough, you have to borrow it from the Sangha. The Sangha is not just the monks and the nuns. The Sangha is also the lay practitioners. From time to time, you see a lay person practicing, practicing better than a monk, generating the energy of mindfulness in order to recognize and calm down the energy of suffering or pain in yourself. Monks, nuns, lay practitioners practicing together, they create a powerful collective energy of mindfulness. There are times when we organize a mindful walk in New York, Los Angeles, uh, Berlin, uh, Paris, for thousands of people, in Rome also. And the collective energy generated by many thousand people is very powerful. And if uh, you happen to be in a group, 
you can very well profit and borrow that collective energy in order to hold your suffering and calm down the suffering inside of you. You allow yourself to be embraced by the Sangha the way the baby allowed itself to be embraced by her mother. Dear, uh, dear uh, Venerables, dear <coughs> brothers and sisters in the Dharma, he is my sorrow, he is my despair, he is my anger. Please help uh, embrace them with me. When you do like that, you are truly practice uh, taking refuge in the Sangha. You surrender to the Sangha. You allow the Sangha to embrace you and help you tr- transform. If you are a good practitioner, you should belong to a Sangha. The collective energy of mindfulness of the Sangha can help you transform and heal. If there is no Sangha in your, temp- in your uh, city, then you have to find people invite people to come together and set up a Sangha. A good practitioner knows how to build a Sangha. The Buddha is an excellent Sangha builder. One year after, only one year after enlightenment, he had a a Sangha of 1,250 monks. With a Sangha like that, the Buddha can help heal many people. Even a Buddha needs a Sangha. That is why, right after enlightenment, he went and searched for members of his Sangha. We who follow the Buddha's path, we have to do the same. Wherever we live, we have to try to build a Sangha to take refuge in. With the seven, with the seventh and eighth exercise, we are able to calm down our painful feeling or emotion. And with the following exercises, we can go further. We can transform that pain into something else like joy and happiness. We know that the fifth and the sixth exercise is to create uh, joy and happiness. And the seventh and the eighth is to know how to handle our suffering, to suffer less. Later in the retreat, we will find the connection between suffering and happiness. It's very strange, but according to the Buddha's teaching, suffering and happiness, they are connected together. If we know how to handle suffering, not only we can suffer less, but we can also make good use of the suffering in order to generate joy and happiness. When you look into a lotus flower, you see many elements that have come together in order to help the lotus flower to manifest. And among these uh, elements that help a lotus flower to manifest, there is the element called mud, the mud. If there is no mud, there is no lotus. You cannot grow lotus on marble. You need the mud in order to make a lotus flower. Joy and happiness are a kind of lotus, they, and they need a kind of mud in order to be possible. So the suffering inside of us, the sorrow, the fear, the anger, they are a kind of mud. And if we know how to make good use of them, we can create joy and happiness. If we try to throw the mud away, we have no hope to make lotus flowers. If we try to throw away the suffering in us, we have nothing in order to make joy joy and happiness. Looking into the flower, you see the trash, you see the garbage. 
a good uh, organic gardener can make good use of the garbage in order to nourish the flower. And a good organic gardener never throw away the garbage. She knows how to make compost from the garbage in order to nourish flowers and vegetables. The same thing is true with good practitioners. They know how to make good use of the suffering in order to create joy and happiness. That is why we can say that if uh, you have suffering, if you have suffer, that is good. With the teaching of the Buddha, we can learn how to make good use of the suffering of the suffering in order to make the lotus of joy and happiness. So uh, we can see that suffering and happiness inter are This is the, the deep teaching of Mahayana Buddhism. The left has the left cannot be by itself alone. The left has to has to lean on the right in order to be. The left cannot be by itself alone. It has to interbe with the right. And that is the teaching of the Avatamsaka Sutra. And interbeing is a Buddhist term borrowed from the Avatamsaka Sutra. Okay. When you look into the suffering, you can see happiness hidden inside. When the organic gardener looks into the garbage, he can see already the flower and the vegetable inside of the garbage. And when we look into happiness, we can see the elements that have uh, brought it to us, including the element of suffering. So that is true uh, with everything like, uh, uh, like uh, left and right, above and below, like uh, Buddha and living beings. This is an abbreviation for living being. When I was a novice monk at the age of 16, my teacher showed me how to bow to a Buddha. Before bowing to the Buddha, you have to meditate first. If not, true communication between you and the Buddha is not possible. And when you bow, when you join your your hand like this, standing in front of the Buddha, you look at Buddha, and you have to see all the elements that have come together in order to produce a Buddha. Looking into the Buddha, you can see suffering. The Buddha has has made good use of suffering in order to create uh, compassion, uh, loving kindness, Looking into the Buddha, you can see non-Buddha elements. Buddha has no self, separate self. And that is why when you look into the Buddha, you see non-Buddha elements that have come together and produced a Buddha. And when we look into a flower, you see many elements that have come together in order to produce a flower. You see the sunshine, the cloud, the soil, and so on. And you see you in the Buddha. So the living being is in the Buddha. And when you look into yourself, which is a a living being, you can see that living beings are made of non-living beings elements, including the element of Buddha. Uh, Buddha is empty of itself, and you you are also empty of a self. And uh, that is the meaning of the first uh, line you recite uh, during your meditation. 
năng lễ sở lễ tánh không tịch Who is bowing? So, and the one who is bowed to, they are, their nature is empty. It means that, uh, dear Buddha, you are empty, and I am also empty. I see me in you, and I see you in me. And you begin to see the nature of interbeing between you and the Buddha. And when you see like that, the bowing will establish good communication, communion between you and the Buddha. And in the Linji uh, tradition, we learn that Buddha and living beings, they inter are. And today, we only need to remember one thing, suffering and happiness. They are empty, they inter are without one, the other cannot be. We should not be afraid of suffering. If we know how we can make good use of suffering in order to create uh, joy and happiness right away, we shall continue tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>